Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 60, no, 75, 75 is where we're at, holy cow, how are we already on episode 75, that is a, that is a very large number. Uh, hey, I had to make a Mana Steel Axe because I have no idea what happened to my axe, but I cannot find it for the life of me, which is not an uncommon problem for Direwolf, but still, I don't know, I also updated the pack between episodes, so I wonder if it disappeared in there, oh, well, we'll see. Uh, hey, I want access to my... Sort of sports and stuff. If I just do that, are you going to be all, like, cool about it, Mr. Amethyst Golem? And be like, yeah, I can do that. And I'll place things in that chest. That would be nice. I'm going to go stick you over here. And then make sure that you are connected up to that. Very nice. Cool. And now we've got access to our Sirtis in here. Beautiful. So I can make a 1k ME storage cell now using some of the available service that we have. Hooray! Uh, as well as some Osmium, which by the way, that's that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Still got to figure out like a good Osmium thing. Also, happy April 1st, everybody. Dyer's recording this on April 1st, and I suspect there's going to be a few uh, hilarious uh, pranks from some of the mods in the pack here. Uh, but if we take a look, uh, we should be currently crafting all the stuff we need. Oh, you're, you go in there as chemical housing. My mistake. I put you in the wrong place. Come back here, you. Chemical cell housing. In fact, goes in this guy. This is, yes, diamond. Is that correct? Nope, I got the wrong one. Chemical cell housing, not item cell housing. Eh, they're similar. Diamond here. Good to go. Now we're cooking. Very nice. Okay, cool. Hey, I've got ME chemical cells. Nice. Now, can I filter you? Because that would be super cool. No, best I can do is pull out your 1K, dude. Can I not put you back together? I may have to make another one of these. Okay, cool. There we are. Okay. Uh, so let's not shift click that again. Not that it was particularly expensive, but still, let's not. Um, so if I wanted you, if I like, what I'd like to be able to do with these chemicals is keep like a certain amount of them, but I suspect that might be tricky. So the mod we're looking at here is mechanistics, applied mechanistics, and there's different tiers of storage cell for chemicals and portable versions of the same. And then there's a chemical P2P tunnel and a cell housing. I question if we can stick a storage bus on the side of a tank. And if that's the case, and I probably didn't need that cell, but not the end of the world. Okay, so you're cooking up all the things you need to cook up for that. But if I had a tank and a storage bus, is that doable? Well, we're gonna find out. What I can do, are you still cooking over here? You are, good. And you've got some oxygen, perfect. That's what I'm gonna test with. So if I put an ME storage bus here, partition storage, not yet. It doesn't look like it can do it, but I may actually need power. Device online. Can I see this oxygen? Not really. Though in fairness, I guess I would want you. Now can I partition? Ooh, I can. Now that's, that's something. That's something cool. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. As a neat thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So that's good to know. Uh, we can actually do that. Nifty. 
All right, that's something to think about. So there's two things I can think of doing here now. So I've currently got my liquid sulfuric acid, right? When we wrapped up last episode, we were looking at making hydrofluoric acid because uh, hydrofluoric acid um, is gonna be needed to, to make our HDPE sheets into PTFE sheets, which is what's gonna be needed for us to get polytetrafluoroethylene uh, along with a pressure disperser for um, for stuff. And then this is also gonna be used eventually for all kinds of crazy contraptions and stuff, especially ostrom plating, which is like our main focus right now. Like for the main quest, that's what we're looking towards, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to build a mechanism reactor pretty soon too. So we should be prepared for all that fun stuff. Um, so that said, what we're probably gonna do today is look at how we're gonna manage this. So we want to get, and by the way, my service is in here, right? Yes, good. We wanna get uh, set up down in this area, right? With, um, with this guy making what he needs to make which is the hydrofluoric acid. So we need the sulfuric acid, fluorite, which we should have plenty of fluorite now. We're doing okay. Um, we're getting there on the fluorite dust. As a reminder, that's being made by crushing granite in the centrifugal separator. It's not a great chance of getting it, but like we just let it run constantly and it will get there, right? This guy's just chugging along beautifully. So fully automated on that. Those ghost things are kind of funny. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, so what do I wanna do? How do I wanna handle this? So we got the 1K storage cell. So what I could do is I could just, very simply if I wanted to, which would be the easier approach, is I can get a decondensator, right? And decondensate from this tank, the liquid sulfuric acid. That's probably a good play. It's probably what I'm going to wind up doing, to be honest with you. So let's just do that. Condensentrator. So there's some things that need to be made for you, but specifically there's some things that you don't know how to make yet, which is you. And did you not know how to make this kind of chemical tank? Well, you're going to learn now. Because I always need more of those. Condensentrator, please. I do like that everything is getting more and more automated now. Like, makes things so much easier. Right? Okay. So I might put this storage cell away for a minute because I'm not sure that I super duper need you. But how about over here, we get some flux ducts. You're both gonna need power to be honest with you. And then we can just rotary condensator you. And what we'll do is we'll gases, we'll output on the right. And for fluids, we'll input on the top. And then what we can have is you. Okay, set to do this. Input on top. Fluids. Fluids. Input on top. Why? I'll probably have to do this. There you go. So acid coming in, uh, sulfuric acid coming out, and now you're ready to insert fluorite. Right, so you over here were extracting on orange, and you on the down were inserting on orange with fluorite, and then you're working on new Terra Preta. Awesome. That was a good automation last episode. I was proud of that one. So now let's look, look let's hook these two up. So now you should be getting your fluorite. Okay. And now you've got hydrofluoric acid happening. That's cool. And it's 100 becomes a thousand, which is not a bad not a bad deal. Okay. Um, so then that covers hydrofluoric acid and we're going to need hydrofluoric acid along with liquid methane. So those two fluids are both going to be needed to make uh, HDPE sheets to turn into PTFE and that'll give us a byproduct of hydrogen, which we can probably just void. 
Um, that said, that's feeling pretty good. So should I just like eject you hydrofluoric acid or should we maybe um, store that in a tank of some kind? I like the idea of a tank for that one. Only because I know we're gonna eventually need it also um, for cool. So you're gonna be, but you're gonna be idle on that. So I don't want to avoid excess on the hydrofluoric acid. Like I want it to back stuff obviously because fluorite, right? Um, and we know how to turn this powder into this fluorite, so that's cool. Now, did I put storage upgrades in this drawer? Because 1024 is a very magic number. It's exactly how much you get if you didn't put any storage upgrades in this drawer, uh, which didn't. Uh, so let's craft a copper upgrade. We'll get at least one. But you always need lots of fluorite, right? What does that get me up to? 8,000? That should be cool for a bit, right? I think that should be fine. Should be fine. Excellent. All right, sweet. So sulfuric acid cooking, doing its job. Might need to speed upgrade some of the things that we set up back here a million years ago. But if we have to speed upgrade this stuff, we will deal with it when the time comes, right? Um, for now, you're cool. And like power, we don't want to like completely choke it out. So let's be careful about it. All right, so that's that. Easy. Easy peasy. So, so now next to this, we're going to want to make... Uh, the thing that's going to do these PTFA sheets. So that's going to be a pressurized reaction chamber. Do we have one of those? Nope. Sorry, we can get most of what we need for it, which is always exciting for me to be able to say, like, yeah, we can make all that. Beautiful. We've done a good job automating, folks. What can I say? Very proud of all the automations that have gone into stuff here. So you're cooking, cooking, cooking. We should be checking to make sure that this is crafting correctly because I have a suspicion it may just be slow. The, oh no, your side configured correctly. Did you finish? Crafting complete. Quantum mechanisms. We made four of them. Where do those go to make the green dudes? Ah, oh, there we go. All right, yep, nope, we're cool. Everything is working, beautiful. Always not a bad idea to double check because you never know what broke. Sweet. All right, so you're gonna do this. You're going to um, input on left. Output on right. So that'll be hydrofluoric acid needed for the PTFE sheets. Then you need liquid methane, um, which will probably wind up, we could either export bus or we could keep in stock methane, right? Can we do that? That sounds cool, right? Um, and then what we could do is we could extract on magenta. Okay. And then we can insert on magenta on the down. And your side config for fluids will be input on top, so that's cool. Okay. Uh, and what I should probably do is filter you to be methane. Never did figure out why that didn't work in 119. It works in my dev environment, so some mod is breaking that. That should be the that should be the liquid. It should look like this. That's what it should be doing. I think it's fixed in 1.24 though, so that should be cool. Alright, so now you connect to there, and that should be good, right? And now we're using up the methane that we have stored to do that. Nice. Okay, so now let's get HDPE sheets. And that's probably gonna be done back here-ish. Okay, so let's focus on that bit. So we should be ready for you now. So HDPE pellets are going to need substrate, liquid ethylene, and oxygen, right? Um, now liquid ethylene and oxygen and substrates. Now this comes from water and hydrogen making ethylene, right? And then 
So what we get, we'd have to automate biofuel if we wanted to go this route. Now I do have the thing up, up there, up in the top area making these, but it's not fully running all the time. So maybe. But the gist is we need you. I might move him down here, the thing that does that. That might not be a terrible idea. It really might not. So oxygen, liquid ethylene. So you're going to need to do what? If I want to, so this is making ethylene, which would have to be turned into a liquid, by the way. No, it doesn't. It does for this bit though. Yeah, that's right. Okay. What I should do is put that there so we remember that's what we're working towards. And that's we're gonna do the enrichment chamber for this because that's obviously way cheaper. Alright, so if we want to get substrates, right? Um, and then you from liquid ethylene, that should be fine. So I'm thinking we do this, right? We take our substrates. Should we wanna just I'm thinking we, we make the ethylene down here, and then we can build like a system that just constantly makes substrates down in the, in the basement here. Um, I don't know how much of these we're gonna need, but it, or I could just take the substrates I already have, use them for a bit, and then see if it's worth it. That might not be a terrible idea. Why don't we do that? So for that, we're gonna need liquid ethylene and oxygen, and that's it. Okay. So why don't I do that? Why don't I get the liquid ethylene going down here? That'll byproduct us a little bit of substrate. We'll also tap into the substrates we already have, and then we'll see if that's enough. And then if we need to up the increasing amount of substrates, we can handle that. Deal? Deal. Okay. So that's what we're going to want to get together down here. Now, I do already have some form of oxygen, right? Um, so your hydrogen over here. You guys are all liquid oxygen. You're gaseous oxygen. Um, and this thing is really just making oxygen. That's his job. So if I were to get a tank, right? And this time I will storage bus oxygen, okay? So your job, I'm just going to set you, the front will be purple for input and output, but no ejecting, and then the back will be input, and that's it. So now you should be filling up with lots of oxygen. You probably feel, like cleared out this whole thing, okay? Uh, if I wanted to, I could throw some speed upgrades in here, but remember, these get very power hungry when you clock, when you overclock them, um, so be careful with that. We're not, we're not amazing on power yet. We're getting there not amazing um, that said I might well I guess I could speed and energy energy speed yeah now we're using like 600 and something thousand RF per I don't know it's a stupid amount see told you it gets stupid real quick What if we did four, right? That doesn't sound terrible. And now we're using 2,000 RF a tick to do that. And remember, we will back stuff on the oxygen. We're only voiding a hydrogen. So once we fill up over here, which we are like basically now, that should be sufficient. That's cool. And then our pipes fill up, and then our machine fills up, and then we'll be fine. So yes, using lots of power, but only for a moment while we clear up the backlog. Where are you going, Quantum? Sneaky, sneaky goat. You seem like you're actually almost keeping up with the needs, so that's kind of nice, actually. No, you actually back stuff, so never mind. You're not keeping up with nothing. All right, so now, um, nope, not you. Uh, storage bus, we can stick here, right? And then I'll partition my storage so only oxygen goes in here, um, and we'll high priority it. Right, so anything that's oxygen, try to stick in there. Uh, I'm not going to dump excess on him. And then if we 
hopefully won't run into an issue where we have to like put high oxygen back into the thing, but we'll see what happens. Now in terms of channels, how are we actually over here? Six of eight? So we're okay, still. We can fit two more devices over on this line, unless I wanna upgrade it. No problemo. Okay, so with that up and running now, we have oxygen in the AE system, right? Boom, that's cool. Now for liquid ethylene, we're probably, we're either gonna wanna do this line, which I feel like, didn't we need liquid carbon dioxide for something? That will take liquid ethane glow. Okay, no, not really. I don't think we need carbon dioxide for much of anything. All right, so what I'll do then is just make liquid ethylene, which I can get, by the way, with ethanol, which I have an unlimited amount of, and sulfur dust, which I have an unlimited amount of, right? And we know how to make sulfur dust. So if I wanted the liquid ethylene, this approach, is there an advanced mixture version of it? There is. Why don't I do this? That seems really nice, right? Because we have like loads of ethanol. And what we could could do, did I do this already? I did do this already. Look at me being all proactive and smart about stuff. We already have ethanol in the thing with the stuff. How cool is that? So if I got an advanced mixer, that would be cool. All right, let me make one of these and I'll be right back. All right, I am totally torn. I keep going back and forth on which direction I want to go with the eth ethylene because, like, on one hand, I worry that this is going to drain through my ethanol reserves very quickly. Um, and if that is the case, because how much do I need for an HDPE pellet? Well, only 50 millibuckets of ethylene. That's not so bad. I can manage. Yeah, so let's do the advanced mixer. And then if it turns out that we're burning through ethanol too fast or if we're not making ethylene fast enough, then I will go the other route. Deal? Deal. All right, so for this, we're going to need a pressurized reaction chamber. So another one of these. Okay, so the pressurized reaction chamber. Um, do we want to, like, buffer this or not really? I don't think we need to, right? So the pressurized reaction chamber is going to make the HDPE pellets. And then the HDPE sheets will be made in an enrichment chamber, right? So let me knock out one of those. And that shouldn't be too bad. Nice. Um, and then we can feed them in here, and that should be cool. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that. So yeah, let's do that. Let's have the enrichment chamber sit here. Do I want to feed them like directly in, or might I need those HDPE sheets for something? You do occasionally want them, but I don't know if you need like a ton of them or not. It would be nice to have them on hand. Uh, like maybe just a maybe just like a small amount of buffer. What I can do is just when we need them, we will make it happen. How's that? Okay, so that should be cool. So you're gonna then um, you guys are gonna need power here. Okay, and the pressurized reaction chamber can sit there. And then your job will be to accept items from the right and push to the left. And your job for items will be accept and output on the top. And you'll be able to extract the items that we need. Or I might stick them in the back, we'll see. I haven't decided how I'm gonna play that yet. Uh, but this is gonna make our, our piece. So is there anything else I can do with this? Uh, not really, though we will need some for the pressure disperser. Okay, so I haven't decided quite how I'm going to like, quote unquote, backstuff this. There's a couple ways we could manage that, right? We could like keep a certain, like we could, we could have a drawer backstuff and have it like push to the drawer behind it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But first, let's just get things going, right? I won't extract from here yet. I'll just leave the fluid card in and be calling it a day. So for you, uh, we need to make our HDP pellets. That's going to be substrates oxygen and liquid ethylene right um so the liquid ethylene will make it a mixer did i get my mixer ish or did i put my mixer i know i made one 
I made all the stuff for it, but I didn't actually complete it. Okay, fair enough. Um, so you're going to combine... Uh, let's see. We're going to have... Let's have this line over here, maybe. Does that sound cool? So you're going to eventually pipe into this machine, right? So for you, Advanced Mixer... We're going to have you doing um, ethanol. Is this the ethanol that we have? It is. Cool. Um, and then over here, you're going to extract. That's kind of like a grayish color. So let's go with like uh, channel 7. Does that sound cool? And then here, you can insert down channel 7. Okay, uh, and then the other thing we're going to need is sulfur dust, right? So you're going to need sulfur dust with a crafting card. And you should have no problem making some of that. Cool? Nice. And then you will extract... What do we have on the down here? Are you filtered or... Why do I have an item extract, but like nothing? Oh, I bet you're down underneath, aren't you? That's right. On the up, you're filtered to Terra Preta for one at a time. Perfect. So that means down here, I can insert on white with a filter of uh, sulfur dust. Right? And then when I connect these two, you should be getting both the ethanol and the sulfur dust and making, why are you getting liquid methane? Oh, you shouldn't be doing that. I do know why it's happening. So down. Ethanol filter, right? Cool. So, a little late, we already have the 10, but it's not going to hurt anything for it to be there. I don't know. It's fine. It's fine. I don't think there's any good way to get it out. All right, so now we've got a bunch of liquid ethylene. And I think for this, I'm just going to use some simple piping, because I don't need anything too fancy here. Um, so I should be able to just do you, and that'll ethylene it up. And then you're going to be good to go for ethylene. Now for oxygen, maybe I put a tank over here. Does that sound cool? And do you think I can export bus into the tank? Does that, is that even a thing I can do? I guess we'll find out, right? So you're making an export bus. Uh, channels wise, I'm pretty solidly good on channels. So what I'm thinking is I like export bus into a tank here. Now in fairness, I could probably just export bus directly into, do I need the tank? Probably not. I could just do this and what oxygen from mechanism, not liquid oxygen, but oxygen oxygen. So I can just do that and you'll be, gases should be input on the right. Hey, look at it go. Look at it go. It works. That's cool. That's cool. Now here's a follow-up question. Can I also do substrates here, right? Um, can I do a capacity card? Capacity card would be you, start. Okay, and if we try that, does that mean I can also add in, for the side config for items, I could input on the right and we could do uh, substrates. Hey, now that is cool. Now that is very cool, right? So that sounds great. So HDPE pellets are here, and then you're going to output, and then you're already configured for input output. So that's cool. And then you're gonna make those sheet things, right? 
So your side config for items should be inputting here. Your side config for items need an eject on. Boom, you're getting HDPE sheets. Um, hydrofluoric acid, liquid methane. Why are you not running? 800, not enough energy to operate. Do I need to throw some energy cards in there, you think? It's possible. Now we're cooking? Oh yeah, you need like a thousand RF. You are not cheap. You are very expensive, sir. Look at you go. So yeah, you actually need more energy than the base storage amount in the machine. That's kind of cool. Okay. So should we just like let you chill here or what do you think? Um, what I'm thinking is functional storage. If we threw an output on the back for you. So maybe not there, but there with an auto eject on. And we did this. And I gave you even more energy upgrades and maybe even a few speed upgrades. How insane would that be to do? 3,000 RF a tick, but it's moving a little better. And now I can lock you. Okay, and now you're gonna start building up these PTFE sheets, which again are used to get 100 millibuckets of polytetrafluorine. And we need 25 millibuckets of that to get Ostrom space blading. Okay, so that's that's a thing. Um, and that's a magma crucible that goes into. Okay, so we could storage bus you. Maybe that would be a smart thing to do because we also need these things for quantum assemblers, right? To make the pressure dispersers. So how many of, I'm, assep, I'm assuming we need a lot, right? Because previous like Ostrom space plating blocks, it's a four X iteration to get those and to get a tier three rocket, we're going to need um, 66 times two plus 24, right? So I'm thinking this is probably the same math that we did before, but 66 times two plus 24 is 156 of these, 156 of these, right? Um, and these times four is 624 Ostrom space platings divided by four, we're gonna need 156 polytetrafluoroethylenes, right, to make this. So let's, if I did an iron downgrade and a copper upgrade, so you can hold 64 now, and you can hold 512 now, is that a reasonable amount? So if we did that, we'll have 512. That'll be way more than we need. And then pressure dispersers, we might need a few of. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just stick with the 64. I really want to be able to hold like I want like two or three stacks is what I want. That's that's the ideal number. Yeah, I wasn't sure if there was any variation thereof. Um, you know what I could do? 512, 256 seems like a better number. So what if I did this? This seems silly, but I think it'll accomplish the goal that I want. So unlock you for a sec. 
put you guys in here, lock you so that you can't accept anything on the bottom drawer, and then same deal, uh, we can drop it down. I think this would work. Now nah, you're still gonna do 512 if I do that, aren't you? Um, How about I do this? Nothing in there? Okay. So how about we do this? So now, you're gonna do 64 per slot, and that would be 256, right? I'm cool with having 256 stored here because that's about how many we're going to need um what i'll probably do you know let's make it like 128 and then we'll, if we lock it that'll be 128 right so it'll it'll continue to fill up until you have 128 and then you'll be good i like that you like that i like that yeah that works for me okay cool good and good how are we on oak, by the way? Yeah, we've been better. Okay, so that, that'll sit. And then the only thing I need to do um, is probably just storage bus you. And that should be cool. I like that. You know what, give me four more energy upgrades. Just so I have an even amount. It, dry, it always drives me nuts when I have an uneven amount of these things. Cool. And then I will partition and high priority you. Cool. But no void upgrading. All right. I think that is a fully functional polytetraflora ethylene PTFE sheet production factory that will hold up to 128 of those things. And then we can set up a recipe for um, what we need, right? So that would be um, this, right, makes, you know, 100 millibuckets. That'll go into my magma crucible. And that should be cool, right, at this point. So I put that in there, and that's done. That's done. These are all done. Right, all done, all done, all done. Sequential fabricator, I don't know that I even needed that. What was that for? I was gonna do something with it, but I guess I didn't really need it. I forget. Okay, so does that mean I can make an Ostrom space plating? Close, now all we need, right, because we can make this, all we need now is osmium infused Ostrom plate, okay? So let's come back next episode to work on that. For now, Dalton, my side and off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.